Let's ask the coach himself, Roger Rashid. Rog, thanks for your time. Uh, good afternoon, boys, and Kells and, and Russell as well. And No, I'm not a fact. I just sit in the right box. All right. <laughs> well, mate, then uh, while we're talking mate, about... You, you, just, you just see who's winning and you just slide over one way or the other. <laughs> <just in> <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate, it's a tough one for you because your role as the coach, obviously, is to get Monfils up to win tonight. And then, uh, you know, you look over there, Leighton, a former player that you coach, and, of course, he's an Aussie, but you've got to push the emotion to a side. Easier said than done sometimes. Uh, yeah, look, look, it is sometimes. But, you know, and look, I know I know every sort of breathing minute of Leighton. I know what he'll be doing now, what, he, what he'll do when he wakes up, where he'll walk, how, how he'll do it, and, and what sort of what shot he's going to hit on, you know, pretty much most occasions. He um, so I've spent so much time with him, but uh, it's easy, you know. It's, it's that's that's fine for me. But when you're um, when you're out there in the middle, and I'll, you know, I can sort of give that information to Gal and show him stuff. And you know, when we have been involved against Leighton last year, um, but there's you know there's your there's a player on the other side of the court, and that's going to be Gal. He's got to think that through and think the process through. You know, he hasn't played on grass boys for three years, uh, so his first time back on grass for three years has been injured leading into into these championships and and um, and so it's, it's going to be his first time also on centre court and uh, so it's, it's going to be quite intriguing and, and Leighton's just, you know, when he comes here, he could he could lose 10 first rounds in a row, Leighton, yeah. and come to Wimbledon and just be a big beast and, and he's he's very, very hard to beat uh, on this court and, and, and at this championship, so I'm looking forward to the challenge actually and just seeing what sort of... Uh, uh, response Gale will have. Because if it was on any other surface, I'll, you know, I would say that Gale would be the favourite in this match. But uh, going on to this court, uh, it's, it, it's more heavily weighted towards Leighton. Roger, I know in the last couple of years that you were with Leighton, you were desperately trying him to become more attacking and to you know, yep. a bit more risky with his shots. Do you think he's finally doing that now? Uh, Kells, look, yeah, look, it's interesting. He he was he definitely uh, definitely changed in 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 our period together. You know, statistically, he was he was de- a, a lot more uh, proactive in in how he saw the court and where he stood in the court and all those sort of things. What you what you'll see here um, on the grass is it actually it actually forces your hand. It actually makes you play aggressive because you have no options because it's a grass court. It gives you reward for the aggressive nature. And Leighton's shots are pretty flat, especially off his backhand side. So, And he's got this sneaky sliding serve, and, and he gets reward from the grass. So his mind ticks over, and he's, such, he's got such a pure mind and one of these lead minds that he understands that if I, can, if I play aggressive, I'll get reward for my shot. And, and he naturally, instinctively plays aggressive on this court. So, yes, you're going to see aggressive tennis from him, and... Uh, People will see that and say, "Wow, he's turned into this aggressive p- player." But you know, put him on the on a hard court and, and sort of a little bit of different setup because of it, just because of the nature of the surface. But yeah, he's he, he hasn't ha- hasn't changed too much, curls. And you know, he, he sort of went. I think he sort of went defensively a little bit for a, for a while there. But this court just definitely just uh, gives him that mindset. We talk on from that, Rog, and and compare a coach or a player coming from another club in football to you going from Leighton to, uh, to Coach Gale. Sometimes I think they fill their head with too much information and they go away from the ability and the way they have been successful themselves. So you've got to find that happy balance, don't you, between how much information do I give him and how, how I let him play his own game also. Yeah, look, Russell, exactly right. And, and, and you know, you, you got to, first of all, you grab that character, you look at him, you assess him, you, you think, OK, what's, what makes him tick? And, uh, you know, how much of that element do I leave in there and what, sort of, what do I bring uh, to him to sort of square him up or make him that, that better player, take him to another level? And, you know, when, when we started uh, together, he's 48 in the world, Gail. He was, you know, so explosive athletically, had, has all the tools hasn't really ticked off on the legitimate professional side of things that actually make him an elite player. And then also he didn't uh, see himself. It was funny, he, he was the number one junior in the world but never, and then, then came on the men's tour and never saw himself. You know, I said to him, I said, do you, do you picture yourself as, do you think you're a top ten player? Where do you, where do you see Gail Monfils? Where do, where do you see your name sort of in the, in the list? And he couldn't really tell me. So, I, you know, day one I said, look, here's the deal. You act, you walk, you walk in the locker room, you start behaving like you're a top ten player every day of the week. That's how you live and breathe it, and that's how you'll, that's how you'll be looked at. And you'll start to sort of put it, you know, those sort of blocks will come, you, they'll, they'll fall into place. And he's been pretty good, Russell. The only, the only thing he does, 
he does suffer from because of his his body uh, and, and his uniqueness of his of his of his joints is he does get some little twinges and, and little injuries, uh, and, and they, that's the only thing we need to straighten out because when he's going well and he can get you can get 12 months out of him, uh, he definitely sits in the top 10 players in the world quite comfortably, and, and that's just been the hardest thing, uh, you know, this early stage anyway. Yeah. Rashgale came out and said uh, he thinks the area you can help him most with in this game is with his head to be tougher in this game. He says tactically he knows how to play late and he knows what to expect. How have you gone about preparing him Good mentally question. for this game? That is a good question, Coach. Oh, yeah. where'd, where'd that come from, Phil? Did you Google that one? Yeah, I, I Googled it up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I looked under good questions to ask Roger Rashid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, there's not, too many words. Uh, yeah, look, 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 yeah, my biggest thing is, yeah, grandstand tennis is different. I'll, gi- I'll give you an example. Nadal last night, I was uh, commentating his match with Roy Masur. He's down two sets to one. He's playing a guy called Robin Husser from the Netherlands. Big serve very explosive, can be dynamic, and, and he can all of a sudden play five minutes and break you, as he did on a couple of occasions, and win the set against Nadal. You need to, you need to be there in your mind for the whole journey, and, and so you've got to be strong enough to, to, to push aside anything that sort of comes your way and, just keep, and all the challenges and just be constant with what you're taking on, and that's that point, the next point and, and, and the next occasion, and block out if you've just dropped a set and not actually feel like... Um, you know, things might be going against you. You got to reset it all and, and, and be strong enough, strong will to push, uh, and just play the, your opponent on that moment, and, and and very instinctively too. Just play, you know, just play very naturally without trying to think it uh, through too much, because you can spend too much time over, you know, over delivering in that in that area. So, I've just told Gail basically if he's if he's prepared to to contribute in the mind game. And, and, and be strong enough mentally over five sets because I said, you've got to understand, uh, Leighton's there every day. He does it at training. He does it at every match he plays, mm-hmm. and, and especially here in Grand Slam tennis. So you've got to expect that he will play an elite style of tennis tomorrow. 